Hello and welcome to COM 363, Introduction to Health Communication for this Summer 2020 course. My name is Dr. Kate Sobiak and I'll be leading you through our three-week adventure. And I guess, in my opinion, this couldn't really be more timely of a course given what we're all experiencing. I was excited to have great weather over the past couple days. So I'm introducing you to my puppy that my husband and I, uh, I guess adopted, really bought, uh, just right around Thanksgiving. It's a Shiba Inu named Pita, P-I-T-A, which my husband came up with that name because it stands for pain in the ass. And she actually does kind of fit that. I was out with my friends on their boat today this is Monday, Memorial Day, so that was pretty freaking awesome. I'll share with you here and there stories about my family. I have five daughters, which is, I know, a handful. And I also do a lot of travel study, where so I'm showing you some examples of that as well. These are from Ireland, which was... You can see a castle in the Guinness um, factory there where they make it. And then also a year ago, I did a travel study to Greece, which was fantastic. So I would highly encourage you, if you're able, to you know, jump in and take part in those kinds of things that are offered here at UW-Whitewater. So I am in the communication department, teach things like research methods, health communication courses, persuasion, and whatever else they tell me to do, to be perfectly honest. My doctorate is an interdisciplinary event, I guess, in urban studies from UW-Milwaukee. I studied primarily in the health communication area and it combined that with things like history and sociology. After I finished my doctorate, I spent two years at the Medical College of Wisconsin on what's called a postdoctoral fellowship, which was a paid two-year position funded by the federal government. And I was the lone communication person in a place called CARE, the Center for AIDS Intervention Research. While I was there, I was continuing my research area that I started with my dissertation on the impact of needle exchange programs among injection drug users. So those are my peeps, as I say, and I've done quite a few articles along those lines. I came to Whitewater in 2012, although I actually worked quite a few years way back in the day after I got my master's degree from Marquette University. And I was teaching a uh, year to year basic COM 110, you know, the speech course and intro to mass COM, and again, pretty much whatever people wanted me to do until I decided to go for my doctorate. So I'm not new really to campus at all, so I think all told probably hmm, maybe 20 years or so of experience teaching just at Whitewater and I've taught other places as well. As I've also done strictly research type jobs, but I much more enjoy the teaching as opposed to just doing research. So now I can do both in my position here. You'll see I posted in day one for May 26, the syllabus. So please make sure that you open that up and review it. A lot of it's your typical information. This is just a shot of the top of it, first page of the syllabus. As you know, the campus hasn't been opened. So other than when we have kind of a sign-in system to 
visit our offices, which is a recent phenomenon. I probably won't be there at all physically, but of course we have the wonders of online. And if you want to reach me, I would say email is really your best bet rather than leaving a voicemail. I mean, I'll get that eventually, but it'd be a lot better. Simply just email me and I'll respond right away. I'm you know, always checking my phone and as you know, you can get your um, announcements about that, notifications. So again, I'll certainly do my best to answer you within a very short period of time, especially because we only have 14 class sessions. If it requires phone conversation, we can certainly set that up as well. We'll have a total of 400 points for this course. There are going to be quizzes, which I have 200 points devoted to quizzes. So each quiz is worth 20 points. The objective portion, which is really almost the entire quiz, is, I think, half a point per question. And then there'll be one small uh, short answer, kind of short essay type question in each quiz. There's a quiz per chapter. I will count only the best 10 out of the 14. So there's 14 chapters, 14 quizzes. You could, I suppose, not, you know, if you feel satisfied by the end of the course, you know, maybe not take the last quiz or maybe to be on the safe side, take all the quizzes that can't hurt you. And again, I will only take the best 10 out of 14. There will be an individual paper and you'll see that posted in the assignments area. And I'll talk a bit more about that after we get rolling through the course a little bit rather than just on the first day. It will be related to media issues, the treatment, the handling of a health related topic. There'll be a small group assignment. You see we're 25 points here. That I'll also give you more information about, but if you look in the assignments area, you'll see the gist of what that is, a very brief attempt at a campaign on a health-related issue to a target audience found at UW-Whitewater. And there's also going to be a significant number of small little exercises or tasks, um, activities, however you want to take a look at it. And uh, I'm trying to be very clear on what's due what day. And please don't fall behind on any of these kinds of things because it'll be really hard to catch up. I tried to make that again as clear as possible. I will probably create some kind of an extra credit activity if you're interested in that, but I'll probably talk about that later, maybe in the last week, if you want to try to boost your grade a bit. There is no final exam for the course, so the paper itself will be the finale of a large assignment for COM 360. Now, I'd really like to talk about this with you as a discussion, but maybe you just ponder this on your own at this point. You know, what are you doing in the COM 363 course? Now, if you're a corporate and health communication major, obviously you have to take it, but I see that there are people on my roster that are outside of communication Maybe you're in the public health area or health promotion, or maybe just thought it might be an interesting course to take. We're going to talk about all of the possibilities through 
the Dupree tax is going to explain the job situation. And again, we really can't be more timely that there are going to be an explosion more than was even anticipated of careers in the health field. Even if you're not a health major, you can certainly find jobs in hospitals, clinics, insurance companies, just to name a few. Or you can use your skill sets to assist in the health industry here in the United States. So I hope that you're going to see quickly how relevant this course is for you as well as another that I'll talk about later on that I'm going to be teaching in the fall that I'd highly recommend you take called Health Literacy and Medical Terminology. They're calling COVID-19 the 100-year pandemic because almost exactly 100 years before COVID-19 became an issue, we had the flu in 1918. And now this is during World War I, which is, you know, obviously hard to even imagine. But I wanted to just show you a little bit of the newspaper coverage that I found. This is the in Wisconsin. So it might look familiar, that bottom left, about you know, how we're fighting the flu, you know, the wearing of masks, which may or may not really be of any great help. But maybe it makes us feel better to think we're doing something. You can see uh, the top left image about schools closing, you know, movie theaters, which at that time would probably hold a thousand individuals, like large gatherings. You can see underneath that word theaters, drastic steps taken to drive malady from the state. Right under that, all public gatherings prohibited. Does this sound familiar to you? Three deaths here, which was in the early stages of the pandemic of flu back in 1918. So what goes around comes around. It's kind of one of the things about life, I think. And we aren't really all that much not more knowledgeable, although we got a lot more information being shared about COVID-19, which is depicted in the top right. You've probably seen an image like that. that the, they call it coronavirus because it resembles a crown, I guess. And um, this sign under it is a, at a place of employment. Um, flu, short for influenza, is increasing. No one knows the cause of this disease. And they're saying it's killed twice as many people in the U.S. as armies lost in France. As the numbers started to climb, they would make comparisons such as you know in New York, uh, which is certainly a hot spot in the United States, you know that killed more people than you know, died in 9/11. Now we're you know as it keeps creeping up, you know, they'll make other kinds of comparisons about the number of deaths and what that it you know likens to some other kind of catastrophic event. So we've got the word safe in bold. You probably have had some kind of safer at home order no matter where you live during these past few months. And the types of advice being given is not all that much different than what we're being told now, right? Well, I guess they don't talk about spitting on the floor. That was more of a thing back in the day with chewing tobacco. But we've got number five, washing your hands. You know, keeping you know your fingers really off your face that's what we were being told um, you know not sharing things now we're we guess I don't hear the keep out of dusty places so much but you know keeping away from other people don't going don't go into crowded areas and the like 
began 1918 and here we are in 2020 basically being told most of the same things and not knowing much what to do about it. So it's an interesting time for me as a health communication person. Now I want to just talk briefly and I think this text is quite straightforward so it shouldn't be difficult to get through the chapters but let's just for a moment talk about the field of communication. We always talk about it being a process. That communication is a process that it isn't successful unless there's shared meaning between sender and receiver. Our reaction to messages, which is a significant part of the course, really depends upon our background, what we are bringing to the situation. We're going to talk about communicating, you know, doctor to patient, doctor to nurse, patients to family and or friends, doctors to family, all these different permutations of communication dyads and beyond that, meaning two people or more, and talking about the health of an individual, a community or society in general like we are seeing today. It's important in taking a look at communication across cultures that what fits perhaps pretty well for one culture may not um, be relevant for another culture. I'm going to talk to you about targeting of information as being quite important which is meaning keeping your audience in mind. What do they know? What are their expectations? What religious beliefs may impact one's willingness or not to do a particular health-related behavior? And of course, there's variations person to person as well, which you really can't predict but we try as best we can to shape messages that will impact a given population. So to wrap up, we're starting out easy. I'm just asking you to do a little video, a couple minutes, talking about yourself and you know what your interest might be in the health area and just you know, give me a little sense of you that you can uh, share. And I would appreciate having that by the end of the day. And again, this is gonna work out to a chapter a day. So start out with chapter one also, and then look for another announcement posting for the second day of class, May 27th. Thank you.